Hello everyone, how's it going? This is Joe Neville. I was just about to start a new playlist for Aruba OS CX when I thought I should show you the physical hardware first. So before I log in, let's have a look around this Aruba OS CX 8320 that I have here. Okay, so here is the Aruba OS CX 8320. As you can see, it's a 1U switch. Now this is aimed at the core or aggregation layer of a network. So it runs layer two functionality like switching, as you'd expect, and layer three, such as OSPF, BGP, VRFs, etc. And that's because it's running Aruba OS CX, so the new operating system from Aruba. So let's take a closer look. Along the front, we have 48 ports of 10 gig base T. And then over here, we have six ports for the transceivers for 40 gigs. So that's QSFP+. We also have here the management port at the top here and the console at the bottom. If I spin this round, we have five fan trays and we have two power supplies. And I can, it's pretty easy to pop out. So one handed, I can pull that out. Store it back in there, all hot swappable as you'd expect. And the other point of note I'd say is like servers, it has this tag at the front which has got the part number, uh, serial number for identification. So let's get this powered up. All right, let's uh, plug that in there and it will boot up. Now it is a data center focus switch, so it's not gonna be under your desk or anything like that. Um, so it is quite noisy when it boots up and the fans are first on, but they do die down. And while that's booting, I'm going to put my console in here in the bottom. And this is my management. Oh, for convenience, I've used the same color for both. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> you might want to use different colors. Right, so console bottom, management top. Good, let's log into this. Here I am on my Mac, which I'm going to use to console an SSH onto the 8320. I've got a trusty dongle and I've got a USB to serial connector. If you were using Windows, you could use an application like Putty, uh, select serial and then the COM port. But with Mac, uh, we don't have that. We just use a terminal. So I'm going to open up uh, iTerm, select a good profile for this uh, bring that across and the command is screen forward slash dev forward slash tty dot usb serial okay i've got two options there i know that it's the lower one and also here i need to put the rate in because for a lot of networking devices the rate is 9600 but for the 8320 it's 115200 so i enter that there and now this is the default login. So we have a default user of admin and the password is blank. So this is a factory default for this switch. Let's have a look at the default configuration. I'm running CX 10.3.10. We have SSH server configured. We have VLAN one and we have this interface management. Now interface management is that physical port that I showed you on the front of the device. And as you can see, it is in a no shutdown state and it has the configuration for IP DHCP. Now I've checked this through and actually that's DHCP V4 and V6. So I've got both of those set up. If you recall, I did plug a cable into this and I've connected it off to my uh, home network. So I do have connected onto that management port right now, a DHCP V4 and a V6 server. So it's a, it's a Windows server. So to check that, we do a show interface MGMT and there you can see the address mode DHCP is up, uh, it's MAC address, it's picked up this V4 address 50.200 default gateway and then this, yeah, this comes from a DHCP V6 server 
and we've got other good things like we've got the DNS server there in V6. So it's essentially dual stacked already. Good stuff. Now, what I want to do is, first of all, I'm going to put the latest version of code on this. There's various ways to do that, but using the web interface is probably the most interesting and is, is actually really easy. So let's go ahead and do that. Now to do that, I actually need to turn on that functionality so that HTTPS server is off by default and you can only turn it on if you configure uh, the user admin password. If you recall what you just saw, I had a user of admin, but there was no password. Now if I go into, so if I go to configure and I try to turn on the HTTPS, let's have a look what command is it. So if I, you turn on HTTPS on various, uh, you on your various VRFs, I need to turn it on for management, for that front panel management port. So if I hit enter, we get this error message that says, failed to enable HTTPS server on VRF MGMT. And it's telling us what we need to do. Admin password is not set. So what we do is we go user admin password, hit enter at that point, and then we put our password in. Okay, good. So if I up arrow here, I should be good to go. Right, so what was that? The IP address that I want is this one. Let's open up a browser. So we get this warning, it's not private, that's fine. Visit the website, yes please. Okay, pre-login banner, fine. Okay, so this is where we log in. Same login for uh, the admin user that we just set. We get warnings because NTP is not set and NTP is needed for the network analytics engine, um, but we don't need to worry about that right now. Close this down and I want to go. So you can see here you have uh, this really nice GUI for the device, which has various options to configure and various uh, amounts of information here. Uh, like that, I'm getting a warning that I don't have one of the power supplies running. Thermals are fine, fans are fine, this kind of thing. So that's all good. Uh, we're going to go to firmware. Let me make this a bit bigger actually. Right, so as you can see, I've got the same versions of code in both the primary, so that's what we're currently running, primary and the secondary. And what you can do is you can update one of the versions of code you choose uh, using these radio buttons down here. And like I said, it's really simple. You can do all of this via the command line if you want to be you know, doing it that way. But uh, this is this is a nice way to do it because it's so easy if you have the code local to your device because you just browse there and drag it across. Now, where do we get the code from? So uh, it is stored on the Aruba support portal. So it's asp.arubanetworks.com. Go to, I selected all there. And then we have the filters for Aruba switches and I selected the product series and then you can download the latest if you've got a login for the code it it requires the device registration before you can get the code okay so i've already downloaded that locally and if we hop back over here uh, i'm going to browse and i have this folder for cx images and i'm going to go for the latest one which was 100331 so i just select that choose that good and then that loads in and it asks, do you want to uh, upload it to the primary or the secondary? I'm just going to go for it, upload to the primary. Yes, please. Off we go, I'll jump ahead as that's loading in. Okay, that's done. So new firmware has been successfully uploaded. Verifying and writing system firmware. You may need to press reboot on the page or the right is telling us that we're gonna to need to reboot. Okay, fine, so let's close that down and we will go ahead and do the reboot. So, 
and I like these things like it gives you this these checks so you it tells you oh you know if you was going to reboot that's actually the secondary image is the same as what you're already running we want to reboot onto this primary I'm going to hit reboot now logged out good Okay, so I can hear that the switch is back up. The fans have died down a bit, so let us log in. Okay, more warnings. Let's go over to firmware, and you can see the current image is 10.0331. That's the primary image, and we have this secondary. If I go over to the console, We can do a show version and then you can see 10331 and it is running off the primary. Okay, that's it for this short video then of a basic setup. Uh, what I'm going to do in this series is go through some of the more basic approaches. Like I've done stuff like using the API and configuring v6 with Aruba quite a bit. So I'm going to do some of the fundamentals in this playlist build that up and then get into some more of the advanced stuff. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. My name is Joe Neville. Please do like, subscribe, all of those good things. You know the drill. I'll be back with another video soon. Thanks very much and goodbye.